Hey, welcome adjusters. This is Daniel the Adjuster coming to you live from the center stage of my car. <laughs> so y'all have been wanting to see what a day looks like in an adjuster's life. Uh, somebody asked me, hey, what, what do you do? Can you kind of go through your day? Uh, well, I'm starting a little bit late. I've already been to my first claim and now on to my second one. So uh, stick to uh, this channel and you'll see what a day in the life of adjusters look like. All right, we're back. And uh, so I'm gonna be paying attention to the road instead of looking at the camera, but. <laughs> so as an adjuster, uh, you're gonna receive uh, your assignments by email, and they are gonna come from the firm that you have uh, signed up with who is working with uh, the insurance companies. You're gonna receive those, you're gonna print them, and you're gonna map them out. Uh, what I mean by that is there's a really cool feature in Exact Analysis where you can click on each project uh, with a click box and then pull down menu right above it says Map Assignments. And what it'll do is put uh, all those assignments onto a map and allow you to them then uh, schedule, you know, kind of map them out to where the areas are and then schedule them out to be able to be uh, reasonable distances between uh, claims. The reason why I use that tool is because there are some days where I might have one that's an hour and a half away and there's a grouping of two or three in one area. Then it helps me to be able to group the three in one area. Even if I got those at different times, I can group those in one area and then uh, hit the, the far away one on a different time. The key to being a good adjuster is time management. You don't want to waste your time. You don't want to be doing these things driving from one side of the town to the other side of the town. Uh, you just tell people, hey, I'll get you on, you know, two days out or three days out or whatever it happens to be, if that's the schedule that you've figured out is best uh, for you in your drive time. People aren't expecting you to pop in there the same day that they've called in a claim because you're getting this claim, uh, when you get it by email, it's literally, they pretty much just got off the phone with the claims department and it has been assigned. It's that quick, it's literally, I, I don't think more than 30 minutes from the time the assignment has been assigned. If you wait, you know, four or five hours before you call them, uh, no big deal, people aren't expecting a call. In fact, a lot of times the people say, I can't believe you called me that fast, that was amazing. And it turns out it was the same day. So so that's, uh, that's pretty normal. So once you've mapped them out and you've got your schedule, uh, so like today I have two and they happen to be right pretty close to each other, maybe 20 minutes apart from each other. Uh, you, you'll map out, uh, you know, the best route, you do whatever one first and then you set it up. I normally typically start mine at eight and then I'll schedule the next one at nine. Now, if I have them really close to each other, I might say between 8.30 and nine on my second one because if I only have five minutes drive, uh, I'm not going to be a 30 minute, it normally takes about 30 minutes to claim uh, an inspection. So I don't want to sit around for 30 minutes, wait for the next one. I generally, uh, if I've got a little bit of a drive, 15, 20 minutes of drive, then I uh, normally spend, schedule them out every hour. So eight, nine, 10, 11, whatever it happens to be. Once you've uh, uh, basically drive to them, I like to do them in the morning so that uh, I can get the claims done and be home by lunchtime. My goal is to always be home by lunchtime uh, or sooner, uh, depending on how many there are, just because it, it allows my afternoon to go a little smoother, a little more free time, and uh, I don't want to tie up my afternoons. The last thing I want to do is, especially in the summer, is be on the roof when it's 120 degrees. No way, don't want to do it. I get out early, sometimes I'll even ask them if I can meet them at seven. Uh, there are some people that go to work and they say, sure, if you come at seven, that would be totally awesome. Uh, now, inside claims, I can't do at seven, but I definitely could do a roof at seven. Got to watch for the dew or the frost in the, in the fall months. But generally speaking, you can, you can do a seven o'clock if you wanted to. As I drive to my next claim here, uh, basically coming up to the driveway, I always park, I come into the subdivision, 
and then I turn around, okay? It's kind of a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> I don't know why I do it, but I think it's basically so it sets me in the direction of the same way I came in, um, knowing that probably I'm going to leave from that same area. Uh, so the subdivisions tend to be, you know, they go in they, and they end up going into a cul-de-sac and so you end up uh, a cul-de-sac or, or, you know, endless street that keeps on going into the subdivision. So typically I'm going to turn around. Here I'm coming into this subdivision. Um, I have actually been in this subdivision quite a bit. Uh, this one I have to map a little bit differently because uh, it's based on whether Google can find the claim or find the location, the address. And it turns out that this um, inspection, uh, or this uh, this claim, I'm talking and trying to do two things at the same time here, but uh, this subdivision actually had the damage uh, while it was a brand new subdivision. So this one is literally a year old uh, subdivision or less. Some of these houses were only three months old when the event occurred. And uh, so we, uh, mapping is not there. Google hasn't mapped it, it's not ready. And so therefore, um, it's really hard to find. So you have to rely on your phone, because believe it or not, um, most of the streets tend to be there, but the houses won't be there. Uh, so what I do is, uh, like on this one, uh, the street, uh, I won't tell you the street, just so that for privacy, but I know that that's the beginning of the entrance of the subdivision that was actually mapped by Google. And so I use that as my, I save that address. And then I drive to the subdivision. Then I pull out my phone, uh, to find this specific address and even if there's no house there it gets me the rough idea of where the street is and then I can look for the street numbers so long story sometimes they're just not mapped properly on Google so therefore they're hard to find so this one here I'm just gonna look up the address real quick so what I do before I get there I take my photo I take my sheet uh, that has been printed out and I take a photo of it. So I'm already taking a photo, so I'm not gonna take another one. But I take a photo because in the photo uh, documentation on my camera, so I use this Sony uh, Cybershot to take all my photos and it's got a card on here that I can take out and put into my computer to upload all the photos. I wanna keep um, documentation, paperwork documentation, address, name, all of whatever, with the photo so that I don't lose who, who those photos belong to. Because you have endless folders of photos, and if you don't document what those photos are, you'll never remember. Because we don't take a picture of the street address, like as in the street sign, we just take a, a photo of the number on the house. So all I'm gonna have is a number on the house, in the front of the house, I'm never gonna remember this, the street name, the insured's name, any of that. So I just take a picture of my, my sheet and uh, assign that to the photos. Generally speaking, when I click on the email, uh, for Google to open up, it finds it blinkety split. So yeah, so it says I'm 11 minutes from it. I don't think that's right because <laughs> I'm in the subdivision. So it's certainly not 11 minutes. So yeah, you just uh, just follow your, your map here and then uh, it'll get you right there. What I love about being in a subdivision that I have done repeatedly uh, work in is it makes it really uh, uh, kind of an easier way to, to do the job knowing that you already know what kind of what the direction of the hail is, you know the damage that you're looking for, and it's not gonna be a surprise. I already know the downspouts are gonna be hammered. I already know that the, all the gutters are gonna be damaged. I already know that maybe there's some good screen damage. Um, it's, it's all hardy board siding, so very rarely you're gonna see some damage on that hardy board, but I'm gonna look for it, because you just never know. And then um, I'm gonna look for fence damage, screen damage, and I know the roof is gonna be hammered. So it makes it easier to do the inspection if you've kind of already been in the subdivision, you already know the, pretty much the basics of the damage, and then there's no surprises. When I go into a brand new subdivision, I've never been there, a new event, I don't know what I'm looking for. So it takes longer to do those inspections. So just keep that in mind. All right, so we're coming up to this. I've, I've been on the street so many times, it's like a wave at each house. Hi, I see you, I remember you. <laughs> So lots of, lots of familiar uh, uh, people here. I've seen this subdivision over and over and over again. So let's see, coming up here on this street here, and then we're looking for, so now I, I've got the street. So I shut off my, my phone and I look for the street number. All right, so there it is right there. So what I'm gonna do is roll down my window and take my first shot.
Then I'm also gonna take a picture of the address on the house. So you take a, a photo of the main house right from the street, and you take a picture of the address. That documents all the information you need for what house we're talking about and the damage, uh, the address, the damage address. Because that's gonna show up on your sheet, so that's why we have to do it. So see how I'm turning around? I drove into the subdivision, drove into the street, but I always turn around. Just a habit, uh, it just works out nice because then when I get back in the car, I know which way I'm leaving from. So if you uh, have any thoughts of a great video that you want me to post, you're interested in what I'm doing, uh, please like and follow, subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you on the next one. Daniel the Adjuster, coming to you live from the car. Bye-bye. <laughs>